Market observations for Mackay in Queensland. Now, in this video, I'm going to be taking a deep dive onto the macroeconomic factors that might be you know, guiding us towards this area, the yes or no decisions and the information we need to know as an investor to proceed and make those yes or no decisions. Also, I'm going to be looking into the individual suburbs in the region, which ones are standing out from the pack and individual streets. We need to get this right as investors, guys. So this is going to be a deep dive into the Mackay Queensland market, trying to find those pockets of the strongest growth and yield potential. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, in this channel we discuss current property investment news, private research like these market observations videos, and then any investment 101 concepts that you might be introducing into the audience. So please get involved, jump into the comments, any other areas you'd like us to focus on, we are all ears. Today we are coming to you from Mackay, Queensland. That is by user request. Now, if you'd like to support the channel and you know you like what we're doing, you like to see more of this content, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to prepare it for you, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you are first to be informed, and then also like this video. That ensures that other people see this video as well. Now, it generally works quite well. If you do see other investors talking about Mackay in Queensland, drop the link to this video into the thread or forum or group or wherever it is and spread the word. Help empower others. We are all in this together, guys. So without further ado, let's jump into Mackay, Queensland. Now, firstly, we need to take a bird's eye view of this area. We can't be reliant on one single score or a one dimensional metric or algorithm. We need to look at where to invest, the overall scope of the opportunity. And then when we find an area that is warranting our attention, we need to make sure that it is exactly the right time to be buying there. We need to have a longer term model, a longer way of assessing these areas. We call that the where. And then when we find these areas of opportunity, we've got to ensure it is the right time to buy there. We are inside the buying window. We call that the when. We have a shorter term growth model when assessing that. So think of things in terms of the where and the when. We have two layers in our analysis. So the first layer, the where. Property investment is a science, guys. You'll see me refer to this slide in every one of these videos. It is repetitive, but we need to hammer this home. We need to consider property investment like any other asset class is demand and supply. It is a formula. We've got very good at doing this now. Over many years in data analysis and me as a software engineer, even before I was professionally working in property investment, looking at the demand side, minusing the supply side gives us our overall opportunity. So let's dive in. I'm going to stay here in the slides for this slide. It's going to be a little bit out of order, but it will save us jumping back and forth. Unemployment in this area. Remember, this is a regional center. So just over 5%, which is around national unemployment rates, 5% unemployment for a regional center is excellent. So very good on the unemployment metric. I know this is a little bit out of order, but I'm going to now jump over into one of our other companies that we own and operate is Picky, P I C K. .com.au. It's just part of our mission to democratize, to even the playing field in the property investment industry. We've given away our research. We've given the keys to the castle around our research. You can jump over to picky.com.au and do exactly what I am doing here right now. Okay. There's no cost associated with getting access to this information. You're able to create a free account and off on your merry way. So let's go over here. We'll search for Mackay. Firstly, let's have a look if it's in our, hot, in our approved or in our top level uh, recommended hotspots um, across the country. This is all algorithmic based. It is actually not in our top three regional areas uh, in Queensland. That's not to say there's not potential there. It's just saying that the algorithm at a high level is not one of the top three Queensland locations. Let's take a deep dive and see if we agree. Firstly, what's jumping out to us? We've got 114,000 population in the area that's on the increase. We've got, it's in the top 73% of all areas. So I've gone to the answers here. The overall where 
It's saying that this is a good opportunity, not very good, not excellent. It's a good opportunity. 27% of local government areas across the country are slightly higher in terms of their ratings from this system. And it is using that overall demand supply formula. I'll bring it back up on the screen again here for us to, to really digest in. So we've got those four main drivers of demand. Sorry, I'm just skipping back and forth. We've got the four main drivers of demand, employment, new projects, lifestyle, population, right? More people who are able to spend more money and they want to stick around longer. And in the future, new projects are going to create any amplify any of these positive effects right now. This is, you know, common, you know, human uh, buyer behavior type stuff, common sense type drivers. We're not trying to overcomplicate this. And the picky website is divided up into these current segments. So we've got an employment study, an area of study first. Employment diversity, this is the actual data and then compared to the nation, very diverse. I like to see the big ticket items. The blue bar there is healthcare and social assistance services, a bit of retail and trade. Then the other yellow one there is education and training for a regional center, very diverse employment. And as we've already seen, very low unemployment rates, a very strong backbone in this area. Income growth, well, it's actually gone slightly backwards, guys, in recent times. This is over the last decade or so. Uh, expect that to change very quickly with this level of unemployment or low level of unemployment. So we have low, very low income growth. It might have meant that over the last decade or so, you've had a lot of high paying mining jobs leaving the area. And then in that time, the dust has settled. Uh, there's been a base form around employment and incomes. And as you can see now, it's quite tight with how it's sitting. Now, this is probably not an important metric in these lower density regional locations. The commute time, particularly relevant to our larger capital cities, it's telling us here that the average commute in this area is around 40 kilometers. So that means there's a lot of people that are driving probably 100 or 150 kilometers to get to work, maybe in out, you know, external mining or agricultural type employments. Uh, in this case, it is of importance, but of lower importance because it is a low density regional location. So look, overall, um, the unemployment, I think over the last decade, it might not have been so healthy. We know that we've had a mining boom and bust and then almost a boom again in that time. Employment diversity is great. It's got a good backbone and unemployment is at very low level. So going forward, I'm relatively comfortable with employment. Lifestyle factors. Let's have a look at these. Um, we've got all the big ticket items, the Bunnings, Woolworths, okay, Mackay Airport, Hamilton Island Airport. So we've got tourism coming through this as a hub. We've got large based hospital, uh, and then obviously a lot of schools. We can see that, you know, this is a regional center with enough of a population to justify the Bunnings of the world, the airports, the strong regional centers. It is a hub and not just a tack on amendment to the area. So very good servicing and lifestyle factors, obviously driven by the beach, uh, you know, the, the jumping off into the Great Barrier Reef and et cetera. This is a great place to grow up and, you know, have a younger family. Uh, and it does have those amenities that we all like and want. So good, very strong on the lifestyle factors. New projects coming through. Okay, this is where you have a combination of these types of areas where you have large uh, infrastructure, you have large mining and agricultural spends, you know, potentially, you know, these really big ticket items. But you have to ask yourself, is this per capita new project spend going to result in positive price pressure? You know, we were, a lot of people in across the country were burnt by the mining boom. Let's go buy in these areas where all these mines are going in. Just look at the money that's been spent there. It's astronomical. Well, guess what they invented? FIFO. Suddenly all the mines were saying, hang on, it's cheaper to fly these people in and have them work longer hours while they're here, put them up in this accommodation and then go back home. You know, they want to do it, we want to do it at lowest cost, right? So that then pulled the rug out of all of these regional centers and the dependence on mining. So we sometimes have to be careful of these big ticket items, but for me, the Mackay area, it does have a very large number of them. And you have the government investing in infrastructure, you know, highway upgrades, uh, you know, very substantial highway upgrades and public infrastructure upgrades all through this region. 
You know, the spend per capita on a national level is in the top 10 in terms of local government areas. It's not just enough to have big ticket projects, they have to result in ongoing employment and the employment has to be based in the area. They can't be flying down to Sydney or back to home to Melbourne or wherever it is. Furthermore, it needs to be then the total per ticket spend needs to be spread across how many people in the area. Obviously, this is not a, a million people city. This is a smaller regional centre. So these big ticket items really have a very big uh, localised impact. So very good from new project spend. Population growth. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Now, this is overall population growth. Uh, in, this is a Ripe House Advisory internal population growth figure and it's coming back up towards 1.5%, which nationally for regional centres is very good. Population versus supply, we have very strong undersupply starting to occur. So very little supply overall. Um, you know, sometimes with these regional centres, particularly in Queensland with building industry issues, we have very low new homes being constructed. Um, population growth projected over the next three years, 3.3%. For these types of regional centres, once again, anything over 1% per annum is very good. This is in the high um, projected population growth um, for the next three years nationwide. All right, so very good there. Let's go across to new construction. We want to make sure that we are not overall in areas of high supply. Uh, excuse the blue lines going across the map here, it's a little bit confusing. Um, look, overall, for the next 12 months, we are projecting 2.1% new home construction. It is, uh, you know, when you look at the next year of one or so percent of population growth, it is larger than that. But we need to be careful. We, need, we can come in here and control our variables. You've got some new suburbs going in, you know, complete new housing estates with over 20% new housing being constructed right now. But when you come in here to the Mackay CBD, you do have your very scarce established suburbs with under 1% projected new homes constructions. And that's in line with population growth. So at least we're not having oversupply issues. You know, there are suburb pockets here with 30% new home construction. Jump over into Picky guys if you want to zoom in on these suburbs and get some names and, and really get your bearings if you'd like. Um, you know, some suburbs we definitely need to stay away from. But any of these established areas through here, you know, 0, 1, 2% uh, new homes in construction, we're pretty comfortable there. And, and at least we can, even if we've got 2 or 3% new construction in the pipeline, we can usually be strategic in where in the suburb that we invest. You know, invest on the city side or the amenity side or the transport side of the suburb and away from all the new housing, which is usually on the exterior. You've got to put that common sense logic based hat on. So overall, employment I'm relatively comfortable with, lifestyle factors are excellent, new projects are excellent, population is okay to average, slightly above average for regionals, new, uh, new construction supply, we do need to be careful of it. So overall, uh, in, as far as re, you know, regional centres go, this is a great wear. You know, we're in the top 73% of all local government areas. This is ticking a lot of boxes, we can do better. But if it means that we've found an area here that's, that's good, we can come in and try and find the best suburb street property. It can sometimes overperform some of these areas that might have a little bit more heat in them. So let's check if we're actually in the buying window or not. I'll go back over here to the slides to do this analysis. All right, purchase analysis, days on market. Look at the red line. I only care about houses. I don't care about units. We're around 40 days on market. It has been stable for one year, very low days on market. All right, so we have some heat in the market. Stock inventory has been decreasing. The coil has been wound up here, guys. High competition, well, it's not really high com competition. It's been around average to low overall in the nation. We are, you know, it has been a pretty heated time over the last year, particularly in some spots or some periods. This has never really gone off the charts. Um, we haven't really had huge turnover or immediate sale turnover over this whole year period, but we are starting to see, you know, days on market has been very tight over that timeline. Stock inventory is starting to dry up there. So days of supply has been trending downwards. You know, we're not in the really tight Brisbane's or Adelaide's or Perth's of the world, even places like Toowoomba, you know, that are down in the 50s in terms of days of supply. We still have uh, you know, 100 days of supply, which is a, a pretty accessible number for us. 
So for me, if anything, and I haven't got to that part yet, we're starting to see these signs of stock drying up. Days on market is holding steady and that's resulting in days of supply starting to tighten and we might have formed a base here. This lack of supply, this tightening of supply may be you know, early signs of an entry point. So let's see if it is causing an entry point. Asking prices. We've had an almost 10% increase in the last 12 months. You know, a nice ramp up here following uh, uh, April, but it has plateaued slightly now. Okay, so let's see if this market's forming. Vendor discounting. We're still in negative territory, guys. So properties are selling for less than asking price, um, but we are coming up here towards zero. It's not a hard and fast rule, but as we start going into positive territory, we are starting to see very clear signs of a lot of heat coming into a market. So this is another sign that confirms tightening in days of supply, that steam, that pressure starting to build. Sold house prices, you know, as you expect with discounting rate increasing, uh, and also the days of supply tightening, asking prices increasing, you'd expect property prices to grow. They're a function of all each other. So we are, have seen, you know, some substantial movement in prices here going back for the last five years. Is it set to continue? For me, just in summary, on the buy side of the equation, we are starting to see a coil up here. We are starting to see a potential entry point. I want to see that confirmed on the rental side of the equation. In these types of regionals, the rental markets generally lead the buying market. All right, so let's see if that is confirmed from this type of analysis. Rental market, extremely tight and tightening. And even in the last month or so, it has come down from you know, 16, 17 down to almost 10 days on the rental market. That is, you know, as efficient as a rental market can p potentially be. You know, the moment there is an open home and the leases can be signed, inspections and all these formalities, that's how long it takes to rent a property. And that's about what it's taking on average in this market. So an extremely bullish signal, all right? Vacancy rates, just pulling upwards. Okay, so this is actually a surprise for me coming into this slide. I would have expected this to really start being at a low point in the cycle. But it's suggesting here that vacancy rates were at a low point, you know, six, six or so months ago. And if you can remember, let's go back here. This was when we really had a level of high competition on the buy side. All right. So that might have been a sign where people were trying to buy, 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 you know, snagging all those deals really quickly and sucking that supply out of the market. Not much was left around. So everyone shifted over to the rental side of the market. Okay, so that's, that could have been something that was literally happening that week, where it might have only been in a, in a place the size of Mackay, you know, 10 or, or 15 people who have just suddenly gone, no, I'm not going to buy yet, let's go sign another lease. And I've just gone over and signed it, pulled vacancy rates back. It's that sensitive sometimes in these size cities. You know, 100,000 people can, you know, really shift the dial. So let's skip forward again. Vacancy rates bottomed out. For me, I'd probably like to see confirmation here on this signal and just see it dip below that longer term moving average. Let's see it pulling back down towards 1% again. On a national level, guys, this is, you know, traditionally very low vacancy rates, but right now at a national level, this is actually quite high. So there might be a reason behind this. This is quite a bullish signal. You know, we've actually seen, what is that? Um, you know, 10% rental growth in the last 12 months. That's extremely bullish. Um, you know, a lot of rental pressure. And even withstanding that vacancy rates, there has been a little bit of pressure ease there. Um, let's try and see if we can see rents and yields pushing forward in the next couple of months. So just to summarize, yields, we've had the plateauing there in the asking price and the rent in the sold price as well. For me, I'm seeing on the buy side some nice uh, you know, alignment in the signals. I would like to see that confirmed on the rental side of the equation. Let's just put a wait and see on this market as a local government area. I would like to see vacancy rates just turn downwards heading into October. And I'd also like to see rents just kicking forward an extra $10 a week. That's going to give me confidence that the rental side of the equation has still got some steam left in it, very tight market, and that would flip over to the buy side very quickly. Only because we have had five years of good growth in the Mackay region, we don't want to be buying you know, a false top. We don't want to be buying something that's the steam has already left the market, but it's still showing these confused signals. Let's get a little bit of confirmation here for Mackay 
on the rental side of the equation. Now, I will just give a quick caveat. Sometimes in these markets, the rental side of the equation can lead us up the garden path because you have to also remember what drives the rental side of the market. Well, investors, the number of investors, what they are wanting to charge for rent, you know, they drive a big part of the rental dialogue in these markets. And if insurance policies are expensive, well, all of the signals associated with the rental market might be, uh, I guess, somewhat tainted. So there are, look out for sure, S-U-R-E insurance, cheaper insurances coming into these cyclone prone areas. But generally the rule for me has always been Mackay and North, Mackay included, uh, is sort of a no-go zone because of the insurance policies. Even if you can access cheaper insurance through shore insurance, that means that your cash flow is good, but not everyone else does. So as long as, you know, we need to see a lot of people with lower insurance policies. And this is a key takeaway, guys, because I see this on the forums all the time. Oh, I can get cheaper insurance, no worries. I'm going to invest in these areas. Well, that's great. Your cash flow is going to be okay, but your growth might be compromised because lots of other people might not know about those insurance policies. Therefore, their cost base is going to be different. So then therefore, their willingness to pay is going to be lower and that might compromise your growth. So even though your cash flow is good, insurance policies are lowered, ongoing growth might be compromised. That's an important point. Now, I still would like to see a month or two for confirmation in this market, um, but if we had a gun to our head and we wanted to buy there, um, what we've got over here on the right is 103 suburbs in Mackay, and they are actually rated top to bottom in terms of our when assessments. Is this the right suburb to buy in the buying window? All right, let's go into East Mackay here. You know, this is leading the pack from a pure algorithmic perspective. This is conforming to the when. It's prime time in the buying window from our market dynamic assessments. Remember the slides that I was going through there? That is looking at the local government area level overall. You know, some, you know, when we're looking at that 100,000 plus population at a local government area level, the exact when, we need to get a little bit more granular than that. So that's why we don't need to dive down into the individual suburbs. And we can find, you know, at a local government area level, the signal is an aggregate of all the suburbs. We can have some suburbs that are in the consolidation or peak phase or the, you know, the downswing phase and others that are just starting the upswing in the prime buying window, right at the same time in the same area. So let's do this analysis for East Mackay. All right, this is the area that was showing very high yields at around that $400,000 entry point. So let's just dive in here to yields. So around that 6% uh, rental yield in the last 90 days rolling, surrounded by other areas with high rental yield. Now this is on the, the ocean, the beach front, um, you know, very high yielding location overall. You can see across the board there, uh, you know, all up into Mackay, you've got one area that's under 4% yield, but you've got some very strong yielding locations, particularly in this south pocket here. So a lot of potential there from a yield perspective. Let's have a look at owner-occupier levels. 58% owner-occupier levels. It's getting on the low side. I typically like to see at least two-thirds owner-occupier levels. That's been proven by our algorithms and what we know as the point of truth. Getting on the low side, so once again, I'd probably be preferring those streets that do have larger numbers of owner occupiers, which you can see in a moment. Um, maybe we can hit over here to vacancy rate. So remember, at a local government area level, it one, was one of the signals that was you know, reversing. We can, when we dive into the individual suburbs, see that this pocket of four suburbs has less than 1% vacancy rate. And even up here into the, into the Mackay CBD as well, extremely low vacancy rate. So when you come out here into the uh, the new housing or the, 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 the lower density areas, vacancy rates start jumping up. But in the Mackay CBD area property, extremely low vacancy rates. So when we can pick our spots, not an issue. Let me go in here to days of supply, um, 110 days of supply, which is around an average. You can see here just north is 152. We're starting to get too much supply into the equation here. We actually have a nice sweet spot here of three suburbs that are really standing out to me as leading the pack fourth, East Mackay, um, and, and then these two here. So once again, go over to Picky and take a deeper dive if you'd like to see. Now let's dive into the street level comparison. So 
one of the concerns I had just at that street uh, suburb versus suburb was slightly too few owner occupiers in the area. But when we come in here to occupancy type by street, we can see here in Middle Market, East Mackay, uh, even down here into this southern area, these areas all through here um, have high owner occupier percentages. These are all sweet spots. Let's stay away from these areas in the north and the far south. Now, property types, we want to come into this market and buy houses. So in the northern areas here, we have a lot of units that are tenanted. We want to stay in this owner-occupied heartland with houses as our primary property type. So stick to these areas through here. Now, let's have a look here at the areas that are higher yielding. So we have lower yielding areas in the north, and then these three or four street pockets through the middle, and particularly on the eastern side, have higher yields. And we have a, probably a sample size issue here with 9% rental yield for this one street pocket. It might have been a very you know, few number of sales. So let's just focus our attention once again on the same suburbs that have the high number of um, houses with the high number of owner occupiers. And we wanna stay away from public housing. So there are two pockets of over 10% public housing. This is starting to become an area, you know, that level of public housing is definitely a, you know, let's check this. Let's go in here and see and provide this you know, human uh, due diligence to go, hang on, where are the public housing compounds and how would this impact my potential investment? So look, this is probably, uh, you know, we can control the dialogue here, guys. Mackay, let's wait a couple of months overall. But when we dive down here into the individual suburbs, we've potentially got some really nice entry points here at a suburb and a street level. If you'd like more of this information, please, it means a huge amount to us. If you would like and subscribe this video, make sure you hit the bell icon. Get down in the comment section. Any questions, I'll come back personally where I can. Um, it really does give us a nice pat on the back and you know encourage us to create more of this content. Any feedback, please let us know. And if you can see other people talking about Mackay, share this link with them. Get the, the love out there, guys. Um, thank you. Talk to you soon.